What's up guys? I'm actually got some time off and uh, a little bit of an update what's going on. My wife's car is going to go back. Uh, her vehicle is leased. I told her not to buy that way but uh, that's not until October and right now it's March and that's the reason why I've got time off. It's uh, March break. Actually I have two weeks off oddly enough. I'm actually going to go out and I'm not going to test drive yet. I'm actually going to build a list of vehicles that I uh, might be interested in. Uh, and I'm going to just sit in them, get a feel for them, have a look, get some features. I'm not even going to bother with numbers because I'm still like six, six to seven months away. So right now is a good time for me to go out there, have a look at vehicles, and um, start making a short list of vehicles that uh, we might be interested in uh, when the time comes. Now I know there's a shortage of, there's a major shortage of vehicles right now. Uh, I, my wife wants to get brand new, I don't think that is possible, I don't think it's, uh, I don't think it's that good of an idea to get brand new either. A lot of uh, new inventory is just not on hand because of the chip shortage. There's uh, low production, so inventory is low, production is low, demand is still fairly high. Which means uh, this car is also going to go back at the same time as my wife. So I'm going to use this, my main vehicle, as, um, as a trade-in. I'm hoping to get a couple thousand dollars out of it at best. Now, the vehicles that uh, have interested me is if we wanted to go back with... I am driving a Jeep. It's a Compass. Uh, I wouldn't mind looking at a Trailhawk because I like the ground clearance. Firstly, a couple important things I want, I want in a new vehicle. I want something that's going to have decent ground clearance. So, probably going to be looking at um, mid-size SUVs, maybe some crossovers. Uh, I would definitely like all-wheel drive 4x4, if possible. That's, that's almost like non-negotiable, that, that I, need to, I, I think we need to have that. My car is actually a two-wheel drive, so is hers. You saw from uh, back in January, we can get some pretty brutal winters, even in the city. And it has to have a decent amount of space. Uh, my kids are still fairly small, like, they, they can both at the back. But I'm more worried about when they grow up. Right? Even if we hold on to this car, I, I've held on to this car for eight years. Even if we hold on to our next vehicle for about the same amount of time, they're going to be entering their teens. And uh, teens can get pretty big. So it's got to have some decent leg room in the back. But I'm not going to look at full size SUVs. Uh, it, those are major gas guzzlers. And there's honestly not too many that I really like. But the biggest issue is because my wife's car is going back and we're trading mine in, we're going down to one vehicle together. Uh, so it's got to be easy for her to drive. And she's not exactly the greatest driver. So it's it's got to be four-wheel drive. It's got to be a little higher up, especially over her Civic. It's got to have good leg room. Those are definites. Um, reliability would be really great. Uh, my Jeep Compass, because it was it's pre-Fiat, has been pretty solid. It's it's not the greatest, but I haven't had to bring it in for any major issues. Uh, I've had to the worst I've had to do to this thing was replace the control, two control arms, and 
the drain for this thing. Uh, I'm just gonna drive around to some dealerships and um, I'm just gonna like look at the at the cars and like just sit in them, just get a feel for them, and then uh, I'm gonna start making up a short list. All right. Bye. Bye. It would be nice if maintenance cost it won't be too high. I'm not looking for a gas guzzler, but I definitely don't want to be spending like a huge amount of, well, how would I define huge? Let's see, uh, my mom drives a Wrangler and thankfully she doesn't drive that much. A full tank of gas, well, a half tank of gas right now is 60 bucks on her Wrangler. Based on today's current price, it's about uh, buck 70 to buck 75 per liter. This thing at half a tank is a little over forty dollars. So you know, do the math. I mean, to me, like that is not too bad. My wife's Civic is about the same. So some of the vehicles that I've considered just through research, doing like some quick searches on um, on Google, I'm looking at the Jeep Wrangle. I'm looking at the uh, the Jeep Cherokee Trailhawk. Uh, I would love to get my hands on a Forester, a Subaru Forester. Maybe an Outback, maybe the Mitsubishi Outlander. Uh, that's gotten some prices from a few people I know. Uh, what else am I looking at? Oh, uh, the one that uh, that is, the horn's been been tooting for quite some time. I've been I've been hearing about. Ooh, that's the new uh, LRT. It's just parked there. It's not running. Okay. One vehicle I've been hearing a lot about for like performance, reliability, and price, the uh, Mazda CX-5. Initially, well, I heard about the CX-3, but the CX-3 is like, it's tiny. It's really small. Uh, so the CX-5, I think, will, should take off the size uh, requirement for us. And my wife really likes the, to the, the Toyota RAV4. She initially was thinking if she, if she was thinking if she would to go back with Honda uh, that she would get the, the HRV. HRV is tiny, and she's not great with the CRV. Now, here's another factor that um, I'm playing into my choices: insurance cost. What was explained to me about how things that things that factor into insurance is how things that we cannot control. Well, we sort of can, but can't afford to control it. The area we live in, our age. Uh, and our sex. Those get factored in. But we can't control those. The things I can control is the type of vehicle we purchase and how that factors in is how often one particular vehicle from that certain make, from that certain model, how often claims are made. And CRVs, like there's a ton of them on the road. So there's a high chance that those vehicles, well, first they probably get into an accident. Secondly, we also know that they're one of the highest break-in and stolen vehicles in in Ontario. So those those are those. That's a ton of um, claims being made on those vehicles. So insurance rates on those will be high, which is also why I'm not too keen on the Rav4 because in that um, in the category of SUVs, there's quite a few. Um, Toyota probably ranks like second in terms of actual physical numbers of how many of them are on the road right now. Uh, just drove by a Ford dealership. Uh, Ford is a definite no. GMC is a definite no. Reliability and especially like the price point for what you get, I've been hearing is just, it's just so off. It's, uh, it's ridiculous. Oh, there's a there's another one. There's a Nissan Rogue right over there. Nissan, I'm hearing a lot of I'm hearing a lot of mixed things about Nissan, especially with their CTV transmission. It's just not the most reliable. So I I, I don't know if I want to consider Nissan. And Nissans, I know they used to be fairly expensive. My mom used to actually have a Nissan Sentra a long time ago. Oh, there's a Mitsubishi uh, dealership over here. So I'll, I'm, I'm gonna go. There's supposed to be a Toyota dealership further down. I, I think I'm gonna hit them first. Another brand that I know it's been brought up. A few times when I asked the question about which cars, which I, which vehicles I should look, start looking at, um, Volkswagen Tiguan. It's very attractive for the price points. Um, I've been hearing a lot about, with, especially with the European vehicles, that uh, reliability over time, so longevity, it is very bad with European vehicles. 
which is I'm actually a little surprised. So uh, no Volvo, no no Volkswagen. Another one is um, really here. Another one I'm to consider would would have been Hyundai and Kia. Now my youngest uncle actually has a Kia. I think he's got a uh, Sorento. And I would have considered them, but there is some weird issue with their engine. There's a there was a faulty piece in their engine. Uh, both Hyundai and Kia actually, because they use the same engine in here. Uh, it can break and it would cause a, a complete engine failure or a, or an engine fire and uh, they have not nailed down the problem that's right in here so uh, I, I don't think I'll consider them at least for the time being okay. and another want for me also is to have make sure that the uh, area behind the rear view mirror is clear enough, like there's not really too many sensors or anything like that, is it really clear enough for me to put my dash cam up, because you know how important that is for me, to always be able to record where I'm driving and you know, all the stupidity I catch. Yeah, the back is a little small though. I don't think it's pretty tough. Yeah, that's gonna be tight. That's gonna be that's gonna be a problem when my kids grow up. Uh, here's a question I should put in this one. Where do you put this guy? Oh, the back. Yeah, it feels heavy. If it fits for me, it's good. If it fits. Just like uh, on my wife's Civic, USB screen is okay size. Uh, I guess I could. Yeah, it's not gonna mount on that. It's gotta mount on the windshield, so it'll probably offset it. So me looking at it from here, uh, you know, it's, yeah, my dash cam still gotta stick out. Uh, it's for the all wheel drive system, I guess. Uh, slightly, uh, just under shoulder level, so. Unless my seat can go higher, I don't think. Uh, no, it doesn't feel like it can go higher. Yeah, uh, getting in and out's not too bad. Shouldn't be an issue for my wife. I would prefer the much higher ground clearance though. Hmm. What about the back? And yeah, it's pretty spacious. It's uh, I think it's a little bit more than what I've got. So that was just the LE hybrid. I totally forgot to mention. My wife absolutely hates this, especially when she's sometimes got to sit in the back in the middle. That little protrusion in the middle. She hates that and it's, it's not too bad on my car. Oh, here's a, here. It's not too bad on my car. But I know uh, a lot of vehicles I'm looking at, it can be pretty uh, substantial. Highlander. I don't know, it looks like just like an extended version of the, uh... Yeah, my wife's not gonna be able to drive that. It's, this thing's pretty huge. It's a full-size door for the uh, rear passenger side. Ah, uh, just for shits, I'll, I'll have a look. Oh my god, there's a lot of space back here. So much space back here. I mean... My knee is nowhere near. Half the space is a little... It's all actually, no. It's highly here, but it tapers off in front. 
goes forward like this and this is all like it's literally like right by my head oh is this uh standard oh it's built right in would have been great when my kids were babies oh my god that's so much room here luxury <laughs> no Oh, it's windy. Okay. I do sort of like the RAV4. I like the feel of it. Um, very spacious. Now I'm going to look more into the specs. I think I heard that... I'm going to turn this way. I think I heard that the, um, the hybrid model, even though it's very hard to find, will have really great gas efficiency like apparently it'll do somewhere like six liters per hundred kilometers for comparison my vehicle this vehicle right now does what's it doing right now 10.3 liters per hundred kilometers that's not overly great but it's not the greatest considering the size of this vehicle i mean my car is not very big My wife's Civic, I think I can get it to like 7.4 liters per hundred kilometers. Her driving habit, on the other hand, is uh, um, I've seen her take it up to like 8.7 liters per hundred kilometers. I don't know how she does that. I think she hits the accelerator hard. I don't think she coasts, coasts much. Like, I don't hit the accelerator hard in this car, not often at least. I'm hitting the accelerator to when I get on the highway. But I do coast quite a bit. And even then, winter time, it's the winter, I, I hit 10.3. I've hit at the most, in extreme cases, I've gone as high as, um, as around 12 liters per hundred kilometers. That was because of the, uh, because of major snowfall that we had. Okay, so where do I park around here? Where does Mitsubishi? No, that's where parking. Yeah, that's insane. Uh, the RAV4 hybrid can do six liters per hundred kilometers. <laughs> I'll save huge on gas if I can get that sort of a vehicle. All right, second stop, Mitsubishi. Oh, there's an Atlanta. Oh, it's an Uber driver, so it's not even their own. Uh, it's actually fairly small. Oh, this is a, a plug-in hybrid. This is also a hybrid. All right, let's get out of the wind and go inside. I'm still masking up, by the way. blend in. No, I think my wife might be okay with that. Oh, and the area behind the uh, the rear view is clear so I can actually put my dash cam on there. Okay. Uh, yeah, so this is a gas one. Not a have. Okay. Oh, it is. Okay. okay. That's actually a fairly big screen too. I kind of like it. Okay, closing it up. Lots of leg room. Lots of headroom. Okay. Wheels have been the small side, but that's not too bad. Step on the Civic. Compartment. This is very clean. I like this. Again, cleared. So I can put my dash cam up. No problems. Oh, it's got like the uh, onboard SOS and Let's uh, check out the back. And 
looks a little tight. I think that's because this thing is just all the way up. It looks like you can actually roll them back a little bit. Oh, okay. So even though this is tight. Oh! Oh, it's adjustable! That's. That's not something I've. Mm, headroom. Or is it because I need to go further back? Nope, this is as far back as it goes. Oh. This might be a problem. At least for me it would be if my kids will end up being as high as I am, as, as tall as I am. I'm six foot. Not to protruding too much, heated seats. Oh, okay, we've got folding seats in the back. So, uh, that's actually not bad in terms of space. I don't know, would this be a contender? He said he's, he's opened up the red one for me too. It's, uh, this one's a gas one. The other one over there is, uh, the uh, HP EV. No, I think. Hold on. That's uh, that's someone else's vehicle. I think that's the red one he's talking about over there. So I think he was saying that the tech on here is different. Uh, okay. Ooh, this is uh, the center is a lot more. Um, I mean, this is further down. Oh, twin border four wheel drive sport. Oh, good, because uh, I hate hitting these by accident. At least when my mom used to have a BMW, those used to be like right here, and she hit it so often by accident. Was it on the BMW or was it on the Jimmy? Oh, is that for the lift gate? What's that? This is a very clean design too, which I kind of do like. Wheel is again a bit on the small side, but man, this headroom in the front is huge. Sunroof. All right, it's time to check out the back. Okay, same issue. Over right here, my head hits. But it does taper off, but you gotta be all the way back here. Again, because I'm six foot. I wonder if these seats, because they rolled back, I wonder if they rolled down too. Probably not. Doesn't feel like it. Oh, this one's got a better view of the back. I do like there's a fair bit of space back there. Again, not a pronounced center beam. You can just be charging back here. Again, it's just... For me, this will be an issue. But it is definitely like the... Almost the perfect size. And I think I now also have to take consideration. Uh, the front end like on my wife's uh, Civic I think it's about a little bit longer than this whereas on my vehicle it's uh, not very that pronounced it's a BC Outlander okay it is damn windy out there I may have to cut this short because my mom had gone out um, to do some errands and on the way back she's like oh I'm, I'm just about home oh I forgot my keys oh well, sh I do kind of like the Outback. Uh, it's just too much of a sporty feel for me, I think. Not sure about the back. So, definitely more interested in the Forester. This one's a Forester, right? Yep. Uh, can't tell. Looks like it's got some fair space in the back. Front, alright. 
see if I can get one to pop one open for me. This will not be practical for the missus, but you know what? Let's get a feel for it. Ugh. Okay, right off the bat, I know she's gonna hate this because my knees are hitting and I need to go for the back and legs. Okay, for me, like the drive position, I'm. I feel like it's this drive position that I'm like in my wife's Civic. That's what it feels like to me. It's, it's, it's a lower down drive position. My feet are more extended out. But that, that screen is a like massive. <laughs> Look at that. So everything's gonna be controlled from here practically. Which I'm personally not a big fan of. I guess you can call me old school. I like my uh, touch buttons. Okay, you know what? This is okay. I, I can still mount my uh, dash cam on there. Oh my god! Look at this head clearance. That's quite a bit. I can mount my dash cam. Screen is smaller, but like I said, that's something I care about. Ooh, they still use a CD player, which I'm okay with. I, I, I still got CDs. I can still make CDs. I wonder if I can... It's just below shoulder level. I actually got almost full, uh, full view. The only thing is, it's right over there, just right there. It's uh, a bit, it might pose a bit of an issue. I wish that I can go higher up a little bit, so I can look more forward over the hood. It's time to check the back. Oh my God! <laughs> this is a ton of space. Okay, maybe not a huge amount of space. I mean, the head clearance is not as high as I thought, but there's so much leg room here. I mean, it's not as, it's not quite as much as the Outback, but it's still pretty good. Yeah. Sunroof is a little bit on the big side, though. And again, this is uh, that center beam is not very pronounced. The one thing my wife complains about, especially with the Subarus, is the mountain beam. She hates having this on here. She says it doesn't look nice. Well, at least it's useful. Yeah, this is the cross tech. I had it on my list once, but uh, after seeing how small it is, yeah, this is this is tiny. <laughs> Man, but these are uh, the uh, blind spots would be killer on this thing. Should be not bad. I like the size of the Forester. I really do. Um, I'm told it's not the greatest in performance. It doesn't have like, the horsepower as the Outback does. It doesn't have the out that bump of the turbo engine. But that's not a big deal for me, to be honest. I mean, it's not a deal breaker. It's not a big deal. It's none of that, really. I do like that Outback. I love the look of the Outback. It, it it almost has that same sort of profile of, the, of my number one choice, which is the uh, the uh, the Jeep Cherokee Trailhawk. It does have that, that nice off-roady, but it's more aggressive looking. It's a typical guy car, what can I say? 
But because I've never leased a vehicle before, I, I've I never actually took into consideration that I could also that we could take my wife's car back to other dealerships to trade in, and they might be able to offer more, and then they'll they'll um, buy out the rest of the lease. Just uh, you know, that's something to consider. Because I think the um, I only told them over here at Subaru, but uh, uh, they off um, according to my wife, they uh, Honda has offered up. $5,000 in return. Now, there's my wife's car, she doesn't drive it that much. The mileage is not very high. However, it did have <clears throat> a couple of scrapes on it, which we did fix. Like, she dinged her, her uh, side mirror. She scraped the side over, I don't remember which side it was, uh, on the lower part of the body. She got someone backing into her. What's that? Uh, someone had backed into her on the the f front and rear passenger side. So um, I don't know if any of that would be taken into consideration. Those are like minor fender bender accidents, two of which were her fault. Now, I am looking at brand new. I'm hoping to convince her just to go used, only because at least they'll have inventory in hand during that time. Uh, I never addressed the possibility of getting a Tesla. Um, a, they're too expensive. B, the reliability is actually not that great. And C, battery technology is not where I want it to be for me to rely on it. I, I've already done two road trips with this car to Boston. I, I'm not sure how well a Tesla's gonna be able to handle that. Especially with, I think I heard that uh, their charge time for those is like one hour to fully charge. Could you imagine just waiting around one hour for your car to fully charge for you to continue on your trip? Oh, I did that trip in I think 13 hours, 13, 14 hours. I believe I made maybe about a dozen stops. So add an extra 12 hours roughly. Let's, let's, or let's, let's be more conservative with that. Let's bring that down to extra eight hours to charge my Tesla driving down to Boston with it. That's a uh, hell no. <laughs> I don't think I'm willing to do that. Sorry. Turn right. Same size as everything else that we're looking at. Front end a little bit. Oh, it's actually, it's a lot better than I thought it was, the front end. Let's have a look. <laughs> well, I don't want to use the test drive myself. Yeah, yeah. It's both of my wife. Yeah. Because we all have... Because you can see inside, but it's fine. So, you can see this is uh, what, uh, almost up the line. You can see you had to head up to head some pieces of tape. But I know, as you said, you don't need that one. Yeah. But if you have the nice. S with the heated steering wheel, it's gonna be the same. Okay. Same st heated steering wheel. So you have a heated front seat. This is the full leather seat. Yes. Yeah, this is a full leather seat. I like how it's very clean here too. It's very clean. Yeah, yeah. Even though the, uh, yeah, even though I, the I screen's not too like big, but it's more wide. Oh. So, uh, so yeah, you have a, mm -hmm. you have a moonroof here. Yeah. So if you want to control this one, it's gonna be this one. Oh, okay. Because yeah, uh, again, for my kids. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Good headspace. Legroom was good. Uh, this is very protruding though. Yeah. Oh, okay. Alright. So here and then you have a center console. Yep. So for the GT you have a you have a heated second row. Oh okay. So yeah here. 
uh, trunk space mm -hmm. and then if you want you, you don't have to go to the second row to uh, move that down you can just oh, okay. use this one and th this little one is only for the center okay. if you want just the center or the full thing oh okay and it's gonna be your spear yeah. okay. this has a good case right? yeah it's a power lift case actually power lift gate for it it will start with the gs okay for the gx mm -hmm. gonna be manual yeah yeah not a big deal for me but yeah <laughs> for my again for my wife it's she'll probably yeah. appreciate that and and in terms of engine power even the engine level yeah, yeah. Most yeah. Yeah. She doesn't have the uh the mountain bars yeah because my wife for some reason she hates it she doesn't like the look of it uh -huh. but i mean well it's it's useful yeah even if you want to put some cargo cargo yeah. tray do camping yeah the only thing i'll, I'll be concerned about for her though is the front end is it looks, looks a little bit on the big side Oh, that's the only thing. Okay, so the Mazda CX-5. I actually quite like it. Um, the cabin's very clean. Uh, but I do not like how small the cargo space is. Like, it looks wide, but when you think of the... Uh, we think of the um, the trunk, uh, the lift gate, and how angled it is. You actually don't have that much space, which is Five miles off. unfortunate. Uh, but otherwise, like reliability, I like it. Uh, all-wheel drive comes in all trims, which I like. Again, it's like Subaru. Uh, it's high enough for her. Would be nice if it was higher up a little bit more. But that's just me being nitpicky. Uh, the front end is fairly large, but it's it's not that much different. I think it's about the same length as uh, my wife's Civic. So the CX-5 is a definite contender. Now one feature that uh, the sales rep had pointed out to me, and I think it only applies to the 2022 model, it, it, or it could be wrong, I'm not sure. Uh, the remote start for the engine, not only does you can do it through your key fob, you can do it through an app on your phone. <laughs> I, um, that brings up one thing I, I didn't actually consider. I'm not crazy about having so much integration in, uh, in our cars. They, they've made it really easy to, for people to steal vehicles. A lot of it has to do through the, it, a lot of it is because of that interconnectivity. So I don't really, it's, I, I, I don't need it. Being able to remote start my car using my phone, using an app. And oh, and on top of that, it's free for the first two years. I mean, it's a, a subscription based feature. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, no thanks. Same size as the CX-5 I saw earlier. Uh, yes, look at that grab lyrics. Oh yeah, look at that. <laughs> That's what I want. Thank you. <laughs> uh, okay. Ooh. The only thing is, I can probably not take my own view. Screen is a good, decent size. But, um, I wonder if I can get to the back though. There we go. Ooh, this is 
จะพยายามโอเคเยอะไปมันไม่ใช่เยอะเฮ้ยเดี๋ยวเราไปดูข้อมูลเพิ่มเติมกันอีกทีนึงนะครับ